The coasts are where the marine and terrestrial environments meet, creating an ecosystem with unique biological and geological characteristics. Around 40% of the global population live less than 100 kilometers from the sea, enjoying the advantages of this environment for food production, recreation and transport. Thus, it's not surprising that estuaries and coasts are also threatened by impacts like pollution and nutrients from wastewater, runoff from agriculture and industrial discharges. Estuaries in particular are also heavily degraded from hydrological alterations from dredging, construction of ports, housing and other structures. Without proper management, this severely affects the well-being of both nature and people. To better understand and manage these impacts, it's important to measure the pollutants themselves, as well as the biodiversity affected. And this is known as environmental monitoring, and in most of Europe is done at least once per year. A very important component of all aquatic environments is the sediment. They are critical for the ability of the ecosystem to recycle and transform nutrients and energy in the form of organic carbon. The microbes that live in these sediments form the basis of its food chain and they also produce substances necessary for other organisms. This makes them key players in the functioning of these ecosystems. In the project Indired, scientists from ASTI studied the microbial communities that live in the sediments of some of the estuaries along the Basque coast. Some of these sites are quite healthy, with good environmental status, but others are contaminated by things like wastewater, past and present industrial activities, or nutrient enrichment. In Indired, we want to compare these sites to identify which microorganisms that typically occur in relatively undisturbed sites. These organisms are referred to as biological indicators. Thanks to recent technological progress in molecular biology, it's now possible to study these microbial communities and their diversity relatively easily by capturing and sequencing their DNA directly from the environment. So today we are here in the Urdai Bay Biosphere Reserve in the mouth of the river Oka. And this is not only because it's such a beautiful place, but it's also one of the places where in the last year we have come every two weeks to take samples for the Indirad project. And this is very simple. So we take 50 milliliters in a sterile tube of the surface sediments. And then we have to put this on ice until we reach the lab. We now extract the environmental DNA directly from the collected sediment sample. And this includes the DNA of all the microorganisms that live in it. But also traces left behind from larger organisms like crabs, oysters and even fish. We then amplify a specific gene used as a taxonomic marker, a species identification barcode of sorts using PCR. This is exactly what is done when testing for the presence of COVID. The sequencing data we obtain can then tell us which organisms that are most abundant, if there are reoccurring seasonal changes, and the differences between environmentally disturbed and less disturbed sites. We can also obtain a rough map of the interactions that occur between different organisms. By studying these ecological interactions, we hope to better understand these estuarine ecosystems and how the human impact affect their environment. This can also help us understand how these ecosystems work, the key processes that are taking place, and the species that are most vulnerable to alterations. We can also identify the species that play key roles in the ecosystem and would affect it disproportionately if they disappeared. This is very important for environmental management, for example, uh, by identifying new bioindicators that allow us to better monitor the health of ecosystems and predict the effects of environmental impacts. Uh, monitoring can also be applied more extensively and with more precision to the current methods.